By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back in Vienna at Vienna again and we have reached the top four, the semi-finals of this prestigious event, the biggest old school Magic the Gathering tournament of Austria. And in that semi-finals we see Thomas who's on robots, he's taking on Philip and Philip is on a blue, white, triple S. So that means Savannah Lions, Suchis and Sarah Angels. Now before I dive into the deck decks, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. First a quick message from the sponsor of this video, 3 for 1 Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 3 for one Trading for sponsoring this video. And we are back and ready to dive into the deck decks. We're gonna start with the deck of Thomas and his Robots Brew. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Thomas. So this is a robots deck. And of course that refers to the many robots in the deck, the artifact creatures, four Suchis, four Triskelions, and one, and I like that one Tetravis. I think Tetravis is such a cool creature. Maybe kind of zoom in on that. It's a six casting cost, just like a trike. It's a one, one flyer and comes into play with three plus one plus one counters as well. So basically it's a four, four flyer. And during your upkeep, you can take those counters off to make little one, one flying tokens um, tetravites. So it's a tetravis and you can make take the tokens off making tetravites. So they're 1-1 one, one flying creatures and of course that goes together quite well with two cards that are also in this deck. The Atok because you can feed those tokens to the Atok and then you know you can give it plus 2 plus 2 every time you sack an artifact. So you can give it plus 6 plus 6 as a boost in total. Um, and then it works even better with the blue card Sage of Letnam. Sage of Letnam is a creature from Antiquities. You can tap it sacrifice a creature and draw a card. That means that potentially one Tetravis could draw you four cards. Now the problem with this Tetravis is that usually it is just too slow because it needs to be into play. You need to wait a whole turn cycle. Then you can take the plus one plus one counters off. And of course those counters become creatures that have again summoning sickness. So you also have to choose between or hitting for four or taking the counters off. I guess if you're Thomas and you put them in your deck, you're almost always gonna take the counters off. So I'm curious to see if that's also true, if he's going to do that or did he, or if he has a different line of play. Um, but it is, of course, a good creature. It's got a lot of potential. Also, can you imagine taking the counters off, then sacking it to the Sage, draw a card, having your Tetravis in the bin, and then use an Animate Dead to get it back. And you can do the same trick over again, draw even more cards. You know, that's kind of, I guess, the dream that you can have with the Tetravis. And of course, uh, when we're talking about a robots deck, it is being combined with those copy artifacts, four copy artifacts in total. That makes perfect sense. Kind of the key card in this deck, right? You wanna get your trike out early, then you wanna start copying them with your uh, copy artifacts. And of course, the strategy to get those trikes out early, um, you know, the, the Mana Vault really fits that strategy. That's the altered cards there in the, mid in the middle. He's playing with three in total. Um, they're one to cast, you tap for three, then during your upkeep, you've got to untap them. And if you don't, you take a damage. So that's basically the deck. But what I find more um, interesting about this brew from Thomas is probably the sideboard. Because look at that sideboard. He can take all the robots out and he can transform the deck kind of in a, yeah, in a very cool red-blue deck with three Sheevan Dragons. He can board into Blood Moons. Um, you know, he can go very anti-blue, of course, with the red Elemental Blast. So I kind of kind of like in that side of the strategy as well. I guess he's not going to board out all the robots, but he could go pretty heavily on red. And then he also has that little black package with the Abyss and also with two Glooms. So Gloom, of course, very useful against the white deck. And guess what? He's playing against a player who's playing with white. Talking about that, let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Philip. And here we see the deck of Philip. Now, this is a deck that you see more often, of course. It's blue-white. Sometimes people play blue-white with a little bit of red for direct damage. They usually splash into black cards like we see here as well, uh, Mind Twist and Demonic Tutor. And then there's this thing with blue-white is you can go several ways. You can go blue-white control, where maybe you even play Creatureless with a Wrath of God, some extra books. So a little bit more towards that, the deck theme. Then you can play uh, blue-white flyers when you go Surrender Befreed Sarah Angels, perhaps some moats. 
And then of course you also have this version where you go, we call it triple S, Savannah Line, Suchi and Sarah Angel. Um, so there's just different directions to go. And what they have in common is that all those decks are quite good. <laughs> They're all pretty strong. Um, and, and for obvious reasons, because you've got good creatures in the form of Sarah Angel, you know, you know, Suchi, of course, is great in Swedish, but also you have that control package where you go with four counter spells, mana drain, they're all in here. And of course, your disenchants and your swords. And because you're playing with blue, you've got the blue power. So you just, you have a very like complete deck. In this case, he's also splashing a little red in the sideboard for those red elemental blasts, which, which I understand because you're going to run into a lot of blue, of course, because, you know, the power is blue. And now that we're talking about the sideboard, maybe it's good to kind of focus on this, on those uh, Divine Offerings. Divine Offering, if you time it right, can be really, really good. It's uh, one white and one from Legends, destroys target artifact, and you gain life equal to the casting cost. Now, the thing is, Divine Offering and Trike, that's an interesting like little game, right? Because if you play your Divine Offering on a Trike that still has counters on it in response, you know, the opponent can take the counters off, deal two damage to you, one damage to the own Trike so that the Trike dies, and then the Divine Offering fizzles and you gain no life. But if you time it right, you know, maybe you can kind of kill like an empty trike with no counters on it and gain six life. And of course, Divine Offering is really good to target on those Suchis. So, I mean, after boarding, Philip definitely has a few weapons that he can board in. But of course, that also counts uh, for his opponent. Talking about that, let's go to the semifinals of Vienna again in 2024. Game number one here at the semifinals of Vienna Geddon. On the left, we have Thomas. He's on robots. And on the right, we have Philip. He's on a deck that's mainly blue and white, a little bit of black, a little bit of red in the sideboard. And um, he's playing triple S. So Suchis, Sarah Angels, and Savannah Lions. And there we go. So the player's picking up their cards. We can have a little look there in the hand of Philip. I saw some, uh, some lands there. And here we see the hand. Of, uh, of Thomas. So Mishra's Factory, Island, we see some robots there, some more lands. Not a lot of acceleration going on, I believe. Oh, and he's got to take a mulligan. So it's going to go down to six. They're in hand of, um, of Philip, by the way. We see uh, a city in a bottle, I believe. There is a Mishra's Factory and a pass turn. And there's a Tundra and a pass. So the image quality is not great, unfortunately. We had some issues with the lighting. There we have a volcanic island. And a pass here. So both players kind of having a, a slow start. Swords to Plowshares there in hand, I see uh, by Philip. And a disenchant there as well. So if Thomas animates, which I don't think he will, it'll probably get disenchanted. Oh, here we go. We've got some more light going on. Oh, wow, look at this. <laughs> okay, we're back. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, lighting makes such a difference when you're uh, recording. So the light is now full on. And we can see the battlefield clearly now. So that's quite nice. So an island there as well for Thomas, who has that uh, time walk in hand. Ooh, a Black Lotus there also for Philip. So it's, they, both of these players have kind of interesting hands. It's about to, to get crazy here or not. I thought maybe with the Black Lotus we would see a follow-up play, but we don't, just a pass. So the Black Lotus is there probably to give uh, Philip access to counter magic because now he could have two blue and he has a counter spell in hand. There we see a sea of brass. I wonder if Thomas is going to go for it. He is going to go for it. So casting a Suchi there, taking a damage, dropping to 19. Are we now going to see a counter spell? I mean, the thing is, if you counter, yeah, you, you might as well disenchant. I forgot about the di disenchant. Because, yes, you can counter, but then you've got to sack your Lotus, which is a pretty hefty price to pay. So this uh, play makes way more sense. And now he's playing his own Suchi. Passing the turn. And there's the draw. Brain Geyser found here by Thomas. And of course, he's uh, well. actually not going to gain life. I wouldn't say he's going to gain some life after the swords, but it was a disenchant, not a sword. So not quite sure why both players are... Uh, well, he takes the damage from the City of Brass, of course. He took that earlier, so he's on 19, but you don't really need any extra dice at the moment. 
And now we can clearly see his hand. So we see Transmute Artifact, Triskelion, Suchi, Brain Geyser, and there was one other card. Anyway, he's going to play the Suchi here. Going to drop to 18, passing the turn. There we see a Power Sink in hand. Also has a Swords to Plowshares in hand. So could go for Swords. Exactly. Attack for 4 so that he'll stay on the same life total. So just going to stay on 18. Exactly. Could consider using the Strip here. To maybe take care of the City of Brass. Okay, gonna go for the Volcanic instead. And it looks like he's gonna pass the turn. So a, a line, another line here could have been to also attack with the Factory. Deal two more uh, points of extra damage. Then again, he's got that Power Sink. There we see a copy here on the, uh, on the Suchi. Could go for the Power Sink here, but then of course he's going to lose the Black Lotus if he wants uh, the Power Sink to be effective. Also has a Balance in hand there, it seems. Balance not really good at the moment. Yeah, thinking about that Power Sink. It looks like he is going to fire off the Power Sink, sacking the Lotus. Means, yeah, exactly. He's got to t uh, tap the city as well. So, going to drop to 17. And this is what I really like about the Power Sink because it forces your opponent to usually tap out, unless, of course, he's got a lot of artifact mana. Meaning that if you're playing against an opponent with counter magic, you kind of have an opening there. And I like this city in a bottle. And this is why City in a Bottle is so good, even against a deck that Thomas is playing with that doesn't have a lot of Arabian Nights. You still take out those key land cards, right? You still take the City of Brass, you still take the Loa. So, City in a Bottle usually gives so much value. Here we see a Time Walk. And then uh, Thomas is going to start the extra turn. Okay, that's, that Sol Ring is quite nice, but needs double blue, I think, for that uh, Brain Geyser. And also for the Transmute Artifact. So he uh, taps the Mox here for the Sol Ring. I mean, this is tough for Thomas, really. A tough position that he's in. There's the attack for four. Going to take more damage. Dropping to nine. And I mean, for Philip, the only thing that he really needs here is that second blue. That would be ideal because then he would have counter magic open. And that's a problem for him right now because look at that underground C from the top, meaning he's got options. Could go for Brain Geyser or could go for Trike. He's on nine, of course. So he is going to go for the blocker. That kind of makes more sense, right? Because if you don't, you're going to take six more, drop to three, which is very, very low. So I understand this, uh, this move. Passing the turn here. Oh, look at that. Finding his own Brain Geyser. But the problem for Philip here is that he's stuck on those three lands. Just needs that double blue so bad. The double blue would give him access to so much counter magic. That Brain Geyser also, of course, has, I believe, a Sarah Angel in hand still. And now they're going to trade here. And yeah, it's understandable from both players here. A trade... Uh, for Philip is not bad, but also for Thomas, it's kind of the thing you have to do being on nine. Oh, there's an animate. Oh, he's got so many options. The top of his deck is being very kind here to Thomas. There's the animate getting back the trike, which is now a three, four. And Philip needs that second blue. Okay, at least finding a land, having four, and, and of course has the Library of Alexandria in hand. So next turn could play out the Sarah. Oh, of course he can, because there's a city in a bottle. <laughs> I was wondering already, why didn't he just play the Loa earlier? But I thought maybe he wanted to go up to seven. But of course he can, because of the city in a bottle. That city has a big influence on this game. And now we can go, exactly, now we can go for a huge Brain Geyser. And this is so nice here for Thomas, that he doesn't have to worry about the double blue. Yes, he's taking a small risk, because he saw that power sink. But usually players play... Power Sync more, more or less as a one-off in the deck besides their counter spell. So if you see that your opponent doesn't have to double blue, it's worth the gamble. And uh, this, is, this is really good. And there's a phone thrown into the match. <laughs> I don't know why. But uh, anyway, there's an ATOG in hand there as well. And I mean, this game has really shifted. You know, Philip was in a really good position but couldn't find the lands he needed. And um, then Thomas kind of took over. And with, the, with that uh, Brain Geyser resolving, that's, uh, that's really a big deal for him. Now, of course, Philip does have five mana. So could go here for Sarah Angel. Going to go for balance, of course. Still had the balance. That's a sensible play. 
Also because Thomas is tapped out, so know that uh, he cannot respond with playing out instances from his hand here. So there's a hit for three with the trike. Philip dropping to 17. Oh, and he is going to lose lands, though. That is a bit unfortunate. I didn't realize that because it looks like um, Thomas has a lot of real estate, but actually he only has three lands and has a lot of mana rocks. Three Moxen and a Soul Ring. Yeah, that is a hefty price to pay. Then in second main, going to tap three. No, he, no, he's not. Oh, he attacked with the, uh, with the factory there. I thought he was going to play something out, but attacked with the Mishra's factory. So, I mean, Thomas is now on six. He's low, but I still would say he's the favorite. He's got so many resources. He's got a very good hand to work with. Exactly. There's a Triskelion hitting the board. Yeah, this, it's just tough here for Philip. Okay, he is finding a land. Oh, okay. It wasn't done with the turn yet. Okay, there's a copy as well. Oh, ho, ho. oh man. This copy is horrible news for Philip. He is finding a land from the top, so... He has four lands to work with, but it's not that blue mana that he wanted for counter magic or for the brain geyser, of course, that he still has in hand. Passing the turn here. He can now swing in for eight. He's on 17, would drop to nine. Actually, he can also animate the factory, but then again, Philip also has that factory of his own. We see, I believe, a mistress uh, workshop there. I wonder what he's going to do. Gonna tap five, I believe. Is that five? Oh, mind twist. Yeah, that's a killer. <laughs> Look at that, Philip picking up the cards like whatever. Yeah, this is this match, this game is a nice example of you know when you're just drawing the cards in the wrong order, when you cannot find that second blue at the right time. I mean, he made that that decision to go sack Lotus for power sync, which was a good decision at the time. But if you would know the, the, the follow-up top decks, which of course you don't, you would have made a different decision. And uh, yeah, the mana base really was uh, was uh, yeah difficult here for Philip. I feel in this in this first game, and then Thomas really really took over. So very interesting uh, game one. Now both players are going to dive into their sideboards, and we will catch back up with them in game uh, number two. Game uh, number two. Here we go. So we've got Philip on the play after losing that first game. And let's see if both players are going to keep their seven. We had, of course, Thomas taking a mulligan in that uh, first game. Still winning. Here we see an underground seat. Pass up the turn here of Philip. And Thomas starting with a Sapphire and a Mox Jet. Okay. And a Mishra's Factory. So that's a great start for him. There we see a Scrubland. Going to tap two. What are we going to see for two? Okay. There's a Time Walk. Going to take an extra turn. That's always helpful. There's, land, no, not a land drop. I won't say land number three, but there's not. There's a Black Lotus, but no follow-up, though. Could have gone for the Suchi. Go a little bit more aggressive. There's a tap for four. Okay, there we see a Suchi on the side of Thomas here. But there's a Divine Offering, of course, coming in from the sideboard. That means that Philip is going to go up to 24. So, I mean, the start is looking, is looking very good for Philip. And look at that Philip passing again. Probably has counter magic in hand. Hard to see there. We do see a Suchi. And uh, there's a Trike in hand there for Thomas and a Suchi and a Shivan Dragon. So, boarded into Shivan. Going to tap four here for a Suchi. There's a Mana Drain, though. Ooh, this could be quite good. Four mana now available for Philip. Oh, is that an Ancestral Recall from the top? Was that Ancestral Recall? He still has the four mana. Yeah, that was the Ancestral Recall. Wow, this could be a monster turn here. Drawing three. Can he find the right cards here to take full advantage of the four mana that he got from the drain? Gonna go for Suchi. And there's a Loa. How many cards in hand? Four, I believe. And I mean, this is quite good, right? You use the four mana from the drain for the Suchi, meaning you've got counter magic open to respond. So for Thomas, it's a bit of a tough spot here. He is going to tap out and go for the trike. You know, basically saying to Philip, you know, if you've got an answer, answer it. He does have an answer. Going to go here uh, for the sword supply shares, choosing maybe not to take the counters off, but gain, gain the life. Nope, he is going to take the counters off. Yeah, and then he's going to kill the 
strike so that it goes to the graveyard is not removed from the game meaning it can still be a target for his anime dead but things are looking very good here in game number two for philip attacking for four thomas on 16 more lands coming tapping four another suchi more pressure on the board okay there's a soul ring got a city of brass i believe it's a soaring in hand and a shivan cannot play out the shivan because he doesn't have double red yet i mean might as well just play out the soul ring right no gonna pass turn preferring to keep two cards in hand here there's the attack for eight wow eight damage here Thomas dropping to eight life. It's looking very bad for him. There's the pass. And we see uh, the Sarah Angel in hand there for Philip choosing not to play it out. There's a soul ring. What is that other card? Ooh, it's a brain geyser. That brain geyser could be kind of his last hope. Gonna play a brain geyser for three. Then the next question is, will it resolve? Brain geyser for three. If he has counter magic, he's going to counter, but it is going to resolve. Needs to find the right cards here. That's a copy artifact, I believe. So he could copy a Suchi. That's going to buy him some time. Ooh, this is, is that a disenchant in hand? I, I can't really see it. And I'm talking about the hand of Philip there. Yeah, it's a disenchant. So could then disenchant the copy if he plays it. There's another factory. I'm just assuming he's going to play out the copy, right? You kind of have to in the situation that he's in. I believe he's on just eight life. So going to take a damage, drop to seven. There's the copy. We're probably going to see a disenchant here. On end step, I guess, there's the disenchant. Now, do remember... Oh, yeah, of course, he doesn't have enough mana. can only animate one. Has to jump with one of the factories. There's another diss, and yep, game number two won here by Philip, and that means we're gonna go into an all decisive game number three. Game number three, here we go. The winner will advance to the finals of Vienna Geddon. This is a pretty big deal. Thomas uh, thinking about here about his opening move. He's on the play after uh, losing game two, but winning game one. There he goes, Mox Ruby, Mox Sapphire. Does he also have a land? We can kind of peek into his hand here. We see anime dead, Suchi, another anime dead. I believe that's a copy artifact there. I believe, not quite sure. And here we see his land drop, just a strip mine. So quite light on lands actually. But of course the mocks in there help. Look at this, Mox Jet. And also City of Brass passing the turn. So Philip also uh, ramping up. Having a disenchant there in hand as well. Ooh, here we see Black Lotus. So a line of play here could be Sack Lotus, tap one of your Moxon, play Suchi, maybe your Ruby. Then you could consider copying it with Copy Artifact. That's, of course, very risky because then Philip, in response, could cast a Disenchant or anything else. Another line of play here could be stripping the City of Brass so that Philip doesn't have access to white mana anymore. But uh, it's tough. And I, I guess if you're Thomas, you don't really want to lose your Strip Mine because he's got no lands in hand. Then again, I mean, this is a good moment to exactly sack and go for that Suchi play because Philip doesn't have two blue yet for counter magic. So it's going to go here for Suchi. Is he going to go for the copy? He is going to go for the copy play. Very risky though. Oh, yep. There it is. Divine offering. Taking care of business. Yeah, this is a vital moment I feel in this game. This, this divine offering is very important here for Philip. He's also gaining life. Going to go up to 24. But look at his hand. He doesn't have any more lands. This is very problematic. There's the pass. This is very problematic for Philip here. But Thomas, of course, also a pretty light on lands, only having that one strip mine. There's the uh, Wheel of Fortune. This is pretty important. Ah, there we see a blue elemental blast. Yeah, that's unfortunate. And I mean, a line here could have been exactly to strip the city before you play the wheel, but of course it's easier from this position. And to be honest, I think a wheel wouldn't be that bad for Philip because he's got huge issues with lands here. Again, not finding any land. There we see a, a Blood Moon and a pass. And the Blood Moon is now a mountain. Wow, this Blood Moon is actually really blocking both players. Two anime debts in hand for Thomas cannot use them because of the Blood Moon. And... 
I mean, also, Philip has huge issues here, only having that one Mistress Factory that is just a Blood Moon. There's a pass. Mind Twist in hand there, by the way, for Thomas. Cannot play it out. There we see a Scrubland and a pass. So just more mountains here for the players. Now remember that Copy Artifact is another Sapphire, so I mean, at least Thomas has some blue mana. And he's playing Robots, of course, so for him the Blood Moon shouldn't uh, be as bad. But look at that, look at Philip having to discard here, that's really bad. His hand's actually quite good, but there's so many things he can do. Cannot play Disenchant, cannot play Swords. There we see a Suchi. That Suchi could be pretty disastrous for Philip. This is the all deciding game here in the semi-finals. Remember that the winner will go to the finals here at Vienna get him. There's the attack for four. Philip dropping to 19. Oh, this is so painful for him. There's a Chaos Orb hitting the board. He needs, I mean, a Mox Pearl. That would be ideal, right? I think that would be the best draw for, uh, for Philip here. There's the pass turn. There's the Underground Sea. So now at least he's got four mana. I believe he had a Suchi in... Yeah, exactly. He's got a Suchi in hand. Can play out the Suchi. I'm expecting him to... Uh, Thomas here to flip on end step. There we go. Is he going to hit it here? Is he going to hit the flip in the semifinals? Yes, he is. And these flips get missed more often than you think. But in this case, they're not uh, being missed. It's not being missed here by Thomas. There's the attack for four. Philip dropping to 15, there's the pass. And the, the irony here is that even if Philip top decks that Mox Pearl disenchants the Blood Moon, then the next turn, Thomas is going to play his Mind Twist, which would be pretty, pretty brutal. There's the attack. Is that an Atok? Yeah, he can play the Atok. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. It is looking very good here for, for, uh, for Thomas here. And, and Philip, ay, 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 he's on 11. Only has mountains and a single black mana that he can make with the Mox Jet. Also a mountain here. There's the attack for five. That's it. Oh, man. Oh, I guess he can sec, of course, all the artifacts to the Atok and, and kill Philip that way. I thought he had one more turn, but yeah. Can sec everything. That Blood Moon was very, very important in this match. And, of course, the fact that Philip just, just couldn't find any lands in game three. It is what it is here. Um, and yeah, Thomas, congratulations, man. You will move on to the finals. And in that finals, you're going to play against Oliver. And we saw, saw Oliver earlier in action in the quarterfinals. He also plays robots. So it's a robots final. But both of your decks have slight differences. So it's a prom it promises to be a very exciting match. Now, if you don't want to miss that, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And if you're already subscribed to the channel, thank you so much. Please uh, don't forget to like, comment and share on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And then there's one last thing you can do to support the show. And that is become a patron. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for all the ins and outs. And uh, the cool thing is if you become a patron at the tier two level, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. Somebody can see.